rocket science was uh, the failure that started the whole lean startup movement. It was um, an unabashed disaster. Um, it was the second crater I had, but the one I was personally responsible for. Um, Ardent, this one I was describing about the supercomputer company, where I think I did some of my best marketing, actually turned out to be a equally big failure, but I could say I was one of many found, uh, co-founders. Uh, rocket science, well, I had a, a couple co-founders, you know, the buck stopped with me. I was the CEO of the company. And, um, um, you know, the biggest failure in rocket science, which was a video game company that was going to capitalize on some really interesting new trends that were going on in video games. One was a, a technology shift from um, uh, console gaming to potentially uh, putting games on CD-ROMs. So CD-ROMs was this intermediate transition between um, running games on, a, uh, on the memory of a, a video game console versus being able to pull a lot more data off of a CD-ROM and it predated doing gaming online. It turned out it was a transition that um, uh, wasn't really a, a permanent platform and um, a lot of our assumptions were wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, the company was built on some technology innovation. And it took me about six months of being CEO of this company, understanding that um, I had no right to be CEO of a company that was in a hits-based entertainment business. My entire career has been in technology businesses. And what I thought was a technology business, we had some great compression technology. We had hired some of the best people out of Apple who were the inventors and developers of QuickTime, and we we're going to use that to build some wonderful games. Um, very quickly realized, um, and maybe not as quickly as I should have, that none of that really mattered in the gaming business. Gaming was entertainment. It was exactly like starting a, you know, a chain of restaurants because we eat out a lot and we had some new cooking equipment. Not that we actually knew how to run restaurants. And worse, thinking that we were going to open up a series of restaurants on like week one. So, you know, we were not only going to like make one game, we were going to make a whole family of games and we were going to teach the gaming business why they were all idiots. Um, and it turned out every basic assumption was just fundamentally flawed. And um, and the interesting thing was we were able to garner uh, large investments. Uh, I think I've raised personally $35 million for that company. Nowadays, maybe not huge, but back then that was a lot of money. Um, and, you know, like we were on the cover of Wired magazine. I was able to create enormous press and enormous interest and piss off everybody else in the gaming business who understood it was an entertainment business, not a technology business. But, you know, Wired said we were the, you know, the the next hot thing in Silicon Valley. And it turns out, no, we were actually the next hot crater in Silicon Valley. And that crater was so deep it left its own iridium layer. Um, but the lessons there were just really stuck with me forever. Um, one is, you know, we believed our own press. It's quite possible and easy for a startup CEO who's good at creating a reality distortion field to actually believe the reality distortion field. Um, two is, uh, and, and this is kind of a heuristic I didn't understand until I left, um, the minute you start not liking your customers, um, you're out of business. So in every business I had done before, I had loved dealing with our customers. They were scientists, they were engineers. When I was Zilog, they were you know, um, systems designers or designing interesting things and I learned something new or ardent. They were you know, researchers in some pretty arcane fields and I learned stuff about computational fluid dynamics or you know, specific applications for reservoir simulation or you, you name it. Um, but at rocket science, I was quickly finding out our customers were 14 year old boys you know, who all they wanted to do was kill something. And they really couldn't care about narrative or storyline or something else. And I was very quickly becoming unenamored with that customer segment and becoming distant from what their needs were. And that's the death of a startup when the CEO really doesn't care and isn't passionately engaged with customer needs. It's over.